After going on her first diet at a young age, Abby developed a relationship with the habit of binge eating. Eating super, super low calorie on this restricted diet, her body was just so hungry that the primal need for food took over and she would go on these binges. This became a habitual occurrence that would happen quite often in secret without others knowing. She'd give in to these binges, eat tons and tons of food, feel very shameful and very guilty, and think that something was wrong with her and her diet, and she had to find a new diet in order to get a hold on this binge eating. Through our work together in the Slim on Starch program, not only has Abby broken free from the binge eating, but has released about 30 pounds by freeing herself from this habit. With such grace and elegance, Abby bravely and vulnerably shares her story with us. And what I so admire is how she does it free of any shame, recognizing that she is not the action that was once a part of her and her past is not a life sentence. Her powerful story that she shares is going to be so inspirational to anybody who struggles with binge eating and overeating and is on this yo-yo dieting cycle. By listening to Abby's story, you will realize that there is a way out. And if you've been suffering with this and struggling with this, this is not the way that it has to be for you forever. Let's get Abby on the camera now to share her story. If you're new here, hey, I'm Healthy Emmy. I'm a nutritionist and the creator of the Slim on Starch program, where you work with me as well as a mindset coach and a nutrition coach to lose weight on a plant-based diet. If you wanna do that, you can click the link in the down bar. So my mom and I had decided together to try um, my fitness pal, and it had, I think it had just come out. And so we went on my fitness pal. I did 1200 calorie diet and I, did not, I rarely added the extra calories that you're supposed to add for exercise. And so needless to say, I lost weight pretty quickly. Um, and I was pleased with the success that I had had. Um, but shortly after that, I became almost like obsessed with food because I was starving. I remember sitting at restaurants with my friends and I couldn't focus on anything but what was in front of them. And I would bring my own little um, plates to have less calories. And I just remember, like, I couldn't think about anything but food. And I realized now it's because I, I was starving. And so um, as this progressed, I had one day where I was like, okay, I'm just going to have one cheat day. It's going to be okay. And so that was um, probably the first time I had a full on binge eating episode. Um, I ate thousands of calories just from the pantry, whatever food I could find. And it, um, I felt guilty, but I just felt so like satisfied, like, oh, that's finally like what I needed. And so I thought that it could be over after that one time, but that quickly spiraled into, um, I, I feel like it gave me such a high that it spiraled into um, just like a coping mechanism um, in for life, for the stressors of life. It became what I did um, whenever I didn't want to do my homework at night after a long day. I would just go to the pantry, go to the refrigerator, eat whatever I could find, wake up the next morning feeling horrible, feeling guilt and shame, and uh, just feeling gross, weighted down by all that food. Um, and so um, and really the guilt and shame kind of spiraled the process. Like that night I would be sad because I had binged. And so I would binge again to try to feel not sad. Um, and so that was really where um, my issues began. On top of binging, I also struggled with trying to overcompensate with exercise. So like I said, I played a lot of sports. I remember at one point I was um, going to soccer practice, coming home, going to the gym, and I would run, bike, and swim, all while trying to get back on that calorie counting. I mean, it was just like a disaster. Um, so that's yeah. really the beginning of my struggles. And since then, I mean, it's really crazy for the past like 10 plus years, that's been an underlying theme of struggling with binging and trying to compensate uh, with exercise and just striving for freedom from food. 
I appreciate you so honestly and vulnerably talking about this and the fact that you can do it creates distance between you and that behavior. So that's just even further proof that this really is something that's mm-hmm. not part of you anymore. And what was happening, yes. you know, as Maslow's hierarchy of needs says, at the very bottom is our physiological need for food. And your body was starved mm-hmm. when you had that cheat. Mm-hmm. It was a major sense of relief where your body finally got what it needed. It would be like walking in the desert for a hundred days without water. And then you finally get water. So of course you're going to chug as much water as you can. You feel this sense of relief and that relief mm-hmm. core of what addiction is that when you get that behavior mm-hmm. substance, it's that um, bliss thank god i feel so much better and that's how we build up that addictive behavior and it's it's heartbreaking because many people can think that they're greedy or gluttonous or there's something wrong with them or why can't i stop eating when really your your poor body's just starved Mm -hmm. that was like just something that was so freeing about the program was kind of going back to like the physiologic stuff that's going on. Um, like the dopamine triggers that you get from doing things like that. And, um, just that you provided an explanation for what was going on in my body and realizing that it wasn't that I wasn't just defined as a gluttonous person, that there was more to it than that. Like that may have been something that I struggled with, but that wasn't a defining feature of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it wasn't you. It was a behavior that had become so entrenched in Mm -hmm. physiological nutritional needs that you couldn't help it because your body was Mm -hmm. And I know you spoke a little bit about, you know, hiding things from your husband and behaviors from your husband, because there's that sense of shame or embarrassment that can come. Mm-hmm. Up. You want to talk about that a little bit, because I know that you are not alone in that. And I would love to talk about that to help people understand that there's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely, like before we got married, I tried to kind of warn him about my behaviors and uh nothing could be like him really like experiencing it. And so I had this um, habit. One of my big habits is that I love to bake and I love to like be creative and see what I can put together. And one way that I was doing that was by coming home and making edible cookie dough or biscuits. And I would get flour everywhere. And I would just like eat as much as I could before he got home. And I would try to clean the counter so that he couldn't see, but he's very good at um, noticing little details that are off. And he would notice the flour on the counter. He would notice like one speck and he'd be like, Abby, like, did you do it again? And I would typically be so down on myself um, that I was not nice to him. I, um, was I was just miserable. I would like be so upset. Um, I was really just like living as half of who I really was. And it, it definitely like, I mean, this affected my life in all areas and it affected our relationship because I, I was just hiding um, myself and hiding that part and not trying to embrace it and fight it. Um, so, yes, that was definitely a huge struggle. And he's been so grateful that I did this program. Um, and it's it's definitely brought us closer together. And it's allowed me to um, just be the Abby that I want to be. Yeah. And I was the whole time, but just didn't know it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And you had mentioned, you know, my values when, when you talked about the things that you really valued in your life, when you talked mm-hmm. about relationship with your husband, your relationship. I know religion is something that's very important to your spirituality and your relationship with God and your friends and your family. And you said food is coming before that. And that's not Abby. That's not me. And we get this Mm -hmm. alignment. So we just had to get you nutritionally, make sure that your body Mm -hmm. was doing what it needed so that you could focus all of your time valuing the things that you truly valued. So just because you were engaging that behavior, it didn't meant that you don't value things and you being able to say I don't want to be doing this is even more proof that who you are just couldn't fully be accessed because your body was starved at that time Mm -hmm. so I'm 
too thrilled that you came here and found us as well. Do you want to talk about some of the other things that you tried before you ended up finding SOS? Yes. So I felt like I had tried, I mean, I felt like I had just worn out all the resources. Um, Something interesting was that um, I feel like every birthday from whenever that started, I was like, this is going to be the year that I um, like kick this issue and that I get fit and get uh, like feel confident in a bathing suit. And um, I remember last year on my birthday being like, man, this has been like over 10 years of birthdays that I've said this and I'm still in the same spot. Um, And so I had tried um, Whole30 several different times and it was like at the 30 day mark, I would have felt great, lost weight. And then then everything would just come back and I would just, it would lead to more binges um, because it wasn't lasting. I had continued to try to do my fitness pal counting macros. Um, I had done the Daniel fast Arden's garden two day cleanse, like, and none of those were lasting. And I had just, I had gotten to a point where I was just seeking some kind of like truth because it was so confusing. Everything that was out there, I had downloaded audio books like the obesity code and, Mm -hmm. um, I had tried intuitive eating. There was like a thing called intuitive eating for Christian women. And they read this book um, that it was a good book, but I was just like, I just don't get it. My body is not intuitively eating. I can't do this. Um, And so it was just like searching and searching for some kind of nutritional and psychological truth that could help me. And I, um, I really felt like I had exhausted every resource. So back to um, last year on my birthday, I was like, um, I've got to find an answer. And so I was seeking and seeking. I was praying about it. And um, I was starting to get pretty hopeless. And I was starting to feel like I was broken and there was no hope for me. And when I feel like I hit rock bottom, um, I met a girl named Kendall who Uh, I happened to go to yoga with her and she ended up opening up to me about her journey um, and that she had also struggled with binging. So that was just a huge relief to know that I wasn't alone in my struggles. Um, And then she told me that she had had success with this program. And so while I'm talking to her, I literally started tearing up because I was just like, okay, is this it? Like, is this, is this what I needed to hear? And so I was like tearing up out of joy and just feeling like maybe this is it. And, um, so yeah, uh, she sent me resources, um, that explained the SOS program. She sent me like her success video and, um, I watched those on my way home and it was kind of crazy. I ended up like crying on my way home for a different reason because I just sunk down into like well this may have worked for her but I'm too far gone I I cannot be healed and um this sounds like a great program but I don't I don't think that it is the truth because I had been tricked like so many other times before and um like I said I was pretty hopeless so I ended up saying about it and um over time I felt like God just like poking me and saying like hey healing is for you. Um, Mm -hmm. And I like this program is a gift from me and you need to do it. And so when I decided to do it, I was like, all right, I am all all in. And I believed wholeheartedly that this was the answer. And it was, it Mm -hmm. was exactly what I needed um, at the exact time I needed it Mm -hmm. most. Yeah, you know, it can, it can become very easy to believe that, or not even believe, but it can become easy to distrust that there is an answer out there. But when we think about that, mm-hmm. intuitively, that doesn't make sense. Because if we say no to everything, because we distrust everything, then we're going to stay suffering and stuff. Mm-hmm you have to say there has to be an answer out there somewhere and there's this Mm -hmm. want to double your success rate you have to double your failure rate which means you have to take Mm -hmm. a move on things until you find what works yes do you want to share with us uh you know what the outcome was of, of you joining this program and what you've achieved 
Absolutely. Um, so let's see. Um, there's so many. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, I have lost um, between 25 to 30 pounds. My weight fluctuates a little bit. Um, and so not only has weight come off, but like almost like a weight, the burden that I was carrying around of binge eating um, is lifted. I am no longer enslaved by food. I am able to, um, my life is just so much more free and open and I'm able to um, invest in people, invest in my marriage um, just on a different level than I was. Um, I I am not perfect in like this, um, like through this program, there's still been like little slip ups, but it's actually incredible. The fact that um, I think like the last time I had a slip up, I've been doing this about eight months was um, in maybe like February and they are so few and far between. And the next morning I was able to evaluate what happened. I did not sit in guilt and shame. And I had the SOS program so ingrained in me that it was so easy to just um, like learn from it and get back up and keep going in it. And I didn't like <laughs> gain weight. I didn't spiral downward. I had all the tools to fight back and it, um, it was just such a relief that one mess up didn't mean messing up forever. Cause it used to be like one binge meant two months of like binging daily to every other day. And the fact that I was able to, um, mess up and get back up, dust off my feet without, um, without a second thought just was so freeing. And that's whenever I knew that I was truly, um, changed for the better and that, like my life would never uh, be the same again, that I would never go back down that path. Um, and um, I mean, just cool things that have happened that I didn't really even expect. It's just like my skin, it feels better athletically. Um, I just feel like my body just wants to like go. And I was, I was exercising a ton before I did this program, but I feel like um, if this makes sense, I feel like whenever I started, so I took a break from exercise at the beginning of the program, but when I started back, I felt like I was in the same spot that I was starting from when I had been exercising a ton, like my body just wants to like go and it just feels so good. Cause at one point I was like, yeah, maybe I just like athletically, maybe those days are behind me, but I actually feel better than I ever have. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, my like energy levels are so much better. I feel so much more able to like uh, give myself fully to, to work and to just to life. Um, I remember probably about month, like between month four to six, like um, I'm finally experiencing that abundance of life. And um, it is through this program that I'm able to like, to experience that and none of it like not none of it but um it wasn't easy but it was it's just incredible how worth it it was mm -hmm. yeah because you what you are identifying there is that you had the foresight to be able to see this is how beautiful and abundant life can be and i just mm -hmm. couldn't break through that barrier you know it was like here's yes. the Wealth of abundance and color and fruit. And then here's me right here, just looking at it through a glass. You couldn't break through and you finally broke through. To yes. It. 100%. Like I just felt so stuck. And um, one thing that I was thinking about was like, I used to come home and make edible cookie dough or like just treats that, um, and that would be how I tried to like be creative. And it was like destroyed. But now I come home and make these beautiful plates. Like, I just think I realized how beautiful vegetables are. <laughs> and I just make these plates that are rainbow. And it is so fun for me. Like, I I have so much fun making my plates now. And um, one other thing is, like, I just planted a garden. And that is something I would have never done a year ago. But every morning I, like, go out and check on my little plants that are sprouting up and, like, 
if I hadn't done this program, I wouldn't have ever done that. So I don't know, just random cool stuff that ha- keeps coming out of this. Well, that was another thing that we wanted to chat about was the things that you achieved that you weren't expecting to to achieve. Mm -hmm. I really tried to go into this um, without focusing on what the outcomes would be for what my body would look like. Um, Because I had all I mean, I have always I feel like everybody wants to look good in a bathing suit. And um, just for years, I have like worn bathing suits like I remember last year I went to the lake with some friends and I held a life jacket like this the whole time um because I didn't want anybody to see my stomach and um I mean and so like a couple weeks ago I wore a bathing suit for the first part of summer and um I just I was so not concerned with how I looked and felt so good and so confident that this was something that like um, I had always wanted and I tried not to be focused on in the program, but the fact that it happened was just such a gift. And that's just another weight that has been lifted is I just have this newfound confidence in this body that, um, I have been gifted and like my body is a gift and, um, it feels so good to feel good in my skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You uh, are looking at health. You know, there's a saying saying that health is a halo that can only Mm -hmm. be by the sick. And you Mm -hmm. had gone through a period of your life where you didn't have that health. And now that you do have it, you're so grateful for it. And so for anybody listening is in a position where you can identify where Abby once was, don't look at that like a burden. And why is this happening to me? And this makes my life so difficult. This is a gift in disguise because once you do get to health, you're so grateful for it. That is so true. Like I really, I kind of like have questioned at times, like why did I have to go through uh, 10 plus years of struggling with this to finally find the answer? But it's like, there was, um, I feel like God really used that those struggling years to prepare me for the joy that I feel now. And now that I had experienced that, I just feel Um, this is something else that has come from the program. I feel this newfound purpose to um, help other people experience the abundance of life that can come from putting these struggles behind you. I just want other people to know that these weights can be lifted that come from food. And um, yeah, I just... Now that I know the feeling, I just crave for other people to know that they can be healed and that um, they can have these same experiences. That was one of the other things I wanted to ask. What advice would you have for somebody that's in the position that you were once in? And then just anything that you learned during the program that you think would be helpful for other people to know that are in the position that you once were in? First and foremost, I just want like, I would want anybody to know that healing is for them. Um, If it is for me, it is for you. And um, this program was worth every penny. Um, I would say like, if you are not putting your health first, and if you are not prioritizing yourself, then you are unable, then like me, I was not prioritizing that then. um, And I was only half of who I really am. And I was not able to serve people, to invest in people, to have relationships with people um, fully because this was such a burden that that truly weighed me down. Um, and I really believe that everybody should um, put the time, effort, money um, into things that can help themselves so that they can fully function as the fullest version of themselves. Um, Something that has just been on my mind recently is like, even though I've gone through all this, and I've had all these incredible experiences, I've been really scared to like, talk about them. I don't know why. But I like fear. uh, I just have this fear of what other people will think about me. And um, I really this next year of my life, I just want to break out of that. Um, I was thinking about it and like if I made a piece of art that I was really proud of, I would want 
the piece of art to be shown and to shine. And um, I, um, I know that God has created me. I am his masterpiece. And I feel like I've been hiding behind a curtain and I'm so ready to just like, and he, I mean, he's just been pushing me to like, Oh, let that curtain go and shine like I'm supposed to. And I just think that this program can really help people to discover um, who they truly are and their unique story and their purpose. And um, I just want, people to be able to unveil that sheet and shine um, fully as the masterpiece that they are. And I, I hope that I can, from this program, just continue to help other people recognize their value and their worth and, um, and unveil that curtain. Thank you for saying that, Abby. This was so beautiful. And I so appreciate you sharing your story with such grace and vulnerability. And this is so inspiring. I think that you have just changed the lives of many people. And I'm sure I'll hear about it from people who joined the program saying they were inspired by you. So thank you for shining your light. Well, thank you for this opportunity. I mean, I mean, thank you so much for this program. It has truly changed me for the better. Special shout out to Slim on Starch nutrition coach Beth and Slim on Starch mindset coach Danny, who alongside me helped Abby free herself from this habit and find success. If you made it to this point in the video, comment grace, elegance, or freedom. One of those three words, because I think those three really encapsulate Abby beautifully. Thank you, Abby, for sharing your story. And for anybody that this resonated with, I hope that I get to meet you very soon. I love you, honeys, and I'll see you in my next video.